Praise the Lord. Let's pray together. Our Father, we thank you for the workers training tonight. We pray, Lord, that you touch every life, train us to be prepared for the assignment you have for everyone in Jesus' name. Open the pages of the scriptures to us. Match our lives with the assignment you have given each of us. And we pray that on that duty, on that assignment that you have appointed, we will succeed in Jesus' name. And we pray, Lord, that your word will do good in every life. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We're looking at Joshua chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 1 all through to verse 9. Whenever we come to any passage of Scripture, it will be good for us as part of our training that we go through those verses and see what the Lord is telling us from the passage of the day. And the reason I take up the text is so that you will know how to interpret the Bible, how to apply the Bible. In fact, there's another area, how to pray, read, or read, pray the passage. What that means is, you read verse 1, and you take everything in verse 1, you turn it to prayer. You read verse 2, you analyze verse 2, apply it to yourself, turn it to prayer. The same thing, verse 3, you go on to the end of those verses. Let me show you what I mean. Take verse 5. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Let's say I'm studying this passage for myself. And I've been going from verse 1 to verse 2 to verse 3 to verse 4. I come to verse 5. And I'm praying, reading the verses. Then I come to verse 5. I said, Lord, you have promised in this great assignment you have given me that no man shall be able to stand before me. I look at the men that are challenges to me, persecutors that are challenges to me, opposers, challenges to me. I mention them if I know their name. Lord, this is what you said, that this opposer, this persecutor will not cut short my ministry. You said, I will not cringe, I will not crumble, I will not fall before this persecutor. Lord, this is what you said, and I know you're always true. And I know you will always fulfill your word that no man, whatever the name, whatever the stature, will be able to stand before me. And then you said, all the days of my life. Then I remind the Lord how he stood with me at the beginning of the ministry. How he stood with me when I thought I couldn't overcome the people before me. And you said, all the days of my life. Lord, am I as strong today as I was then? Make me strong. And then tomorrow, and then till the end of my life. You said as you were with Moses. You were with him before Pharaoh. He wasn't afraid. And he went on as seeing him who is invisible. Equip me today. I'm praying on that verse. Energize me today. And empower me today so that no Pharaoh and no Nebuchadnezzar will be able to defeat me and whatever regime of a government may be there in my country, Lord, make me to stand. If you are with me, one with God is in the majority. It means I'm stronger than all the things that challenge my life. Then you said, I will not fail thee. 
Lord, this is what I need to make the ministry move on. This is what I need to carry on the ministry. Lord, you said you will not fail me. I believe you will not fail me. And you said you will not forsake me. I know. There's no problem that will challenge my life beyond your equipment and beyond your provision. And look, I'm still on verse 5. And so if I don't know how to pray, and I say, I don't know, even know what to say when I'm praying. And once I pray for five minutes or ten minutes, I'm through. I don't know what to say again. You take that passage of the day, and verse by verse by verse, you pray through them. And by the end, then you are inspired to even pray more on other things. Today, as we look at verses 1 to 9, I'm talking to you on the supernatural victory of God's commissioned servants. The supernatural victory of God's commissioned servants. Look at verse 1. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, thank God, God himself said that Moses was still a servant. There should be no doubt in the heart of Joshua, in the heart of the children of Israel, that even though God said that Moses will not go into the land of Canaan, yet he went to heaven. After his death, God still said Moses was a servant. He said that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses, Minister, saying, Moses, tell me. I can't hear you now. Are you unhappy? I said, tell me. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise the passing on of a man of God does not stop the word of God, the work of God. A servant passes on, Jehovah is still there. A servant passes on, the work of the Lord is still there. And the gospel still goes on, even though Martin Luther is gone, even though John Wesley is gone, even though the people who have known that carried the gospel torch, they've gone, the master abides, and the master remains. Moses, my servant is dead, now therefore arise. Go over this Jordan and all these people unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you. As I said unto Moses, the Lord had given the promise to Abraham. And then he repeated thee to Moses. And I said, Joshua, the whole land is yours by promise. But in practice, you are not going to possess any part your foot does not tread upon. The same thing with all the promises of God. We're not going to possess whatever part our foot has not trodden upon. In verse 4, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea, toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. That is, now that you have known the parameters and the perimeter and the territory that you have to cover, I've given everything to you. It's not yours now because your foot has not trodden upon them. There shall no man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. Somebody there shout, Amen. Amen. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. We don't have any fear. We don't have any concern. There's no worry. There's no anxiety. God is greater than all men. God is greater than all persecutors. God is greater than all opposers. And he has said he is nearer than the persecutor. He is nearer than the man or the woman that you may fear. He says, there shall no man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. I receive that. 
I got it. It is mine. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage. Be strong and of a good courage. Actually, that is the very foundation and a solid ground upon which to build every other thing. Without courage, we will not take a step. Without courage, Joshua will not face the Canaanites. Without courage, you'll be weak in yourself. Without courage, you'll be nursing the wound of yesterday. Without courage, your vision will be blurred and the revelation will be cloudy. Without courage, you'll not even want to rise up in the morning and get out of bed. Without courage, will be nothing. And it says, be strong and of a good courage. For unto these people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto thy fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous. You see that again? It talks about being strong and being courageous. And it repeats it again. Be strong and very courageous. Whatever knowledge you have without courage, that knowledge will be in the cold room, will be in the fridge, will be in the freezer. It's not edible. It's not useful. It's not profitable. You will not have strength in your backbone without courage. There's no strength in your voice without courage. There's no strength in your decision without courage. We need courage. And so that's why God said in verse 7, He said, only be thou strong. I'm very courageous that thou mayest observe to do, to obey, to carry out, to keep all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Why do we hear so much and we do so little? Lack of courage, lack of courage. A problem is not lack of knowledge. We have the knowledge. We know when to say no. We know when to resist the enemy. We know when to forge ahead and grab and grip what the Lord has ordained. But it's the lack of courage that makes us not to be able to do what he has appointed for us to do. It says, turn not from each to the right hand. When you do that, you're weak in your conviction, or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. The book, this book of the law, shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Why? Meditating, meditating, meditating on the word of God gives us confidence, gives us courage. While you are at home, inside your chamber, you have gone over the pages of Scripture. You have meditated on the promises of God. You have meditated on the power of God. You have meditated on the precepts of God. You have meditated on the possibilities with God. Before you came out of your chamber, you are already a giant, a champion. And so when you come out, all the things you see and the people you see, they do not become an overwhelming Goliath over you because you have read, you have applied, you have meditated on the word before coming out. It says that there may observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make Thou shalt make, is in your hand, thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then somebody there tell me, I shall have good success. Have I not commanded thee, verse 9, be strong and of a good courage? That's the third time, verse 6, verse 7, verse 9, be strong and of a good courage, be not afraid. Neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord 
thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. And the church said, Amen. Amen. If you look at verse 9, once again, if you were to turn that to prayer, Lord, you have commanded me. The highest authority on earth has, co has commanded me. The highest authority among angels has commanded me. And the command is clear. And what I am to do is clear. Lord, have you not commanded me? I am going in the strength of that command. And because you have commanded me and you said I should be strong, it means I have the way with her to be strong. You couldn't command me to be something I could not be. You told me, be strong. Lord, I am strong. I am strong. I'm of a good courage. I will not fear a little baby that was born last week. I will not fear a little child that started going to primary school just uh, last month. I will not fear a young man, a teenager that is just finding out how life is. You commanded me to be strong. Lord, I am going to be strong. I'm going to be of a good courage. And you say, be not afraid. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm not afraid of anything behind the curtain. I'm not be afraid of anything around me. I'm not afraid of anything invisible. I'm not afraid of all the conspiracies of Satan and those demons. I'm not afraid. Neither be dismayed. Lord, I'm not dismayed. My heart is clear. My mind is clear. I know the way I am going and I'm going to reach there. And then he says, for the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. Thank you, Lord. You are with me. You are by my side. You are in front of me. You are ahead of me. You are on top of me. Underneath me are the everlasting hands. Lord, I thank you. I praise you that I'm not going to fail in the work you have committed into my hands. You are reading and praying through what you are reading. That's why we need to take the scriptures more seriously. And as we do this, you'll be stronger. You'll be higher. And you'll be fearless in doing the work of the Lord in Jesus' name. I want an amen from the church. The message, the supernatural victory of God's commissioned servants. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the collective consideration of their great commission. Their great commission for all of them to collectively consider together the collective consideration of their great commission. Point number two, the contagious courage of a godly conqueror. The contagious courage of a godly conqueror. If a leader is courageous, the followers will be courageous. If the shepherd is courageous, the sheep, the saints, the members of the church will be courageous. If the pastor is courageous, the people will be courageous. But smite the shepherd and let the shepherd become a weakling. Somebody does not have, that does not have any backbone. Let smite the shepherd and let the shepherd become like an amphibian. It's neither here nor there. And the rest of the people following, they will not have courage. But if the leader has courage, if the pastor has courage, if the parent has courage, if the champion leader has courage, then the followers will be courageous because courage is contagious. When a godly conqueror is leading the way, thank God that courage will spill over to you. Point number three, the constant companionship of a glorious captain. The constant companionship of our glorious captain. Point number one, the collective consideration of their great commission. Joshua chapter 1 verse 3. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you. 
as I said unto Moses, is talking to the children of Israel collectively. And so, Joshua, if you mobilize all the children of Israel and their army in particular, and you make them tread everywhere, and you tell them the direction to go. You go here, you go there, you go here, you go there. And the feet of the army of the children of Israel stand in any place. You have possessed that place. Collective consideration in our church. If we look at our states, if we look at this state in particular, we look at all the local governments. We look at all the various divisions and we put a local church there, a local church. We're not waiting for members before we do that. We put something there, something there, something there. And our foot will tread in that place. And the transmission center will tread in that place. And the voice of the gospel will come up in that place. And there's a women ministry there. There's a children ministry there. There's campus ministry there. There's youth ministry there. And there's the local church there where we'll possess the land. From the wilderness and, the, and this Lebanon. From the wilderness, the remote areas. The places where even maybe some amenities have not got to. And it says, even to the great river, and we get to the borders and the shores of those rivers, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, all the places the Hittites have said, we're here, our religion will stay here, our religion will occupy the land. No, they were there because we have not come. Once we come, Satan will relocate. Once we come, evil spirits will relocate. Once we come, all those occultic people, all the people that are troubling the people, oppressing the people, we tell them to go. Light has come. Darkness must vanish away. And it says, Unto the great sea, toward the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. It shall be our coast. I'll be there. You'll be there. There shall no man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. You've gone to a place and you're planting the church there. There must be a deeper life church in that place you have been passing by and you have never seen deeper life church there. Deeper life is coming there. We tried, we could not. It's because you didn't read verse 5. We tried, they drove us away. It's because you didn't kneel down and read verse 5 and pray through verse 5 that no man shall be able to stand before you when you take the word of God and you hold on to the promise that cannot fail. Show me where is the man, where is the woman that will stand before you. They'll carry their shrine out of that place. They will run away with all the things they have, everything they have planned. They'll carry all those sheds away from there. God will establish you there. And God will establish the gospel there. There shall no man, there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. All the days of thy life. Somebody shout, all the days of thy life. You know, there are people, if you call them, brother, can you do this? He says, sir, you know, if you called me 20 years ago to do that, I will jump at it. But old age is coming, and weakness is coming. I can barely stand, today you will stand. I can barely walk, today you will walk. All the evidence of the old man, old age, that will not allow you to rise up, that will not allow you to move into the territory God has appointed for you, the Lord is going to remove everything from your life tonight in Jesus' name. He says, as I was with Moses, as I was with Moses, before the rock where there was no water, as I was with Moses, 
before Pharaoh who said, you will not see my face anymore as I was with Moses. And before Og and Bishan, and then he gave the command, and all of them were destroyed and conquered as I was with Moses. And he raised up his sand, he raised up his rod, and Joshua was conquering. And when he laid down the rod, the Amalekites were conquering. And he raised up the hand permanently. Permanent victory came as I was with Moses. I can't hear your amen. As I was with Moses before the Red Sea, that Red Sea will part before you. Jordan will divide before you. It says, so will I be with thee. I will not fail thee. I will not fail thee. Nor forsake thee. You see, there are some people, when they read their Bible, because they don't, they don't read with uh, both eyes, they close uh, the right eye, and they read with the left eye. So, all they can see there is what they can see with their left eye. The other people will close their left eye, and then they will read with the right eye. All they can see is what you see with the right eye. Open both eyes. Your eyes will see. What eyes have never seen, what ears have never heard, what has never entered into the heart of man, what God has prepared for them that love him. I can see something, the giant in you is going to rise up. Look at Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13, we are bred for the left eye. Old Testament, we're reading with the right eye. New Testament, we're combining both together. Open both of your eyes. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness. Be content with some things as ye have. For he has said, what did he say? I said, what has he said? I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. That's what he said in Joshua chapter 1, verse 5. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. He said it also in the New Testament. And it's our collective, our collective uh, great commission. And as we're moving on, we're going to possess. Somebody there said we're going to possess. Look at Psalm 2. We're reading from verse 8. Psalm 2. We're reading from verse 8. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost part of the earth for thy possession. Can we possess this country? Can we take it away from the hands of the people who are usurping authority over the country? Can we take the gospel everywhere? Can we penetrate every part of the gospel? Can we all agree together? We're going to ask the Lord, and according to the promise that will not fail, the Lord will give unto us. Ask of me. Forget the devil. Ask of me. Forget the demons. Ask of me. Forget the intruders. Ask of me. Forget the people that are unlawfully sitting on the hearts of the people. Ask of me. And I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance. I see the fulfillment coming. I see the possession coming. And the uttermost parts of the earth, and the uttermost parts of the earth, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. You must possess. I said you must possess. What is the possessor there? It's going to happen. In your lifetime, it's going to happen. But the grace of God is going to happen. In the power of the Spirit is going to happen. You possess in Jesus' name. Point number two, the contagious courage 
of a godly conqueror. The contagious courage of a godly conqueror. We're coming to Joshua chapter 1, verse 6. Be strong and of a good courage. Look up here. If a child of God sits down by the side of the road, drops his head, and is weeping and weeping and weeping and crying, and he has the Bible in his hand, but he closes the Bible, I am discouraged. I am weak. I don't have strength. I cannot go on anymore. The Lord will look at him and pass by. He's not taking the pill that God has given him that will make him strong, that will transfer heaven's energy into his life. And he's sitting down there like an orphan. I am not an orphan. I have a father in heaven. Is the creator of the heavens and the earth. I be God in heaven is the one that makes the weak strong. I be God in heaven is the creator of the heavens and the earth. And if there's any sickness, any weakness, he can take everything away in one moment of time. You have a father in heaven. He will not leave you alone. He will not abandon you by the wayside. And he has told you he has something for you. He says, get this and be strong. Swallow this and be courageous. Get this one inside you and uh, meditate on the word of God. I've given you that word is a creative word. It has creative power. It will recreate you tonight in Jesus' name. Be strong. I am strong. I am strong and of a good courage. For unto these people shall thou, 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 the work the Lord has given you, nobody else will do it. The assignment God has for you, nobody else will replace you. Yes, God has a thousand people that can do that work, but he has decided in heaven that you are the one to do it. I will. Somebody there, I will. You will in Jesus' name. Thou shalt divide for an inheritance the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong. Only, you don't need any other thing. Be thou strong. Only. Be thou strong and very courageous. If you are strong and courageous, you will see the victory. You'll possess the land. You'll have everything the Lord has for you in Jesus' name. That thou mayest observe to do all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand. Don't deviate. Don't be diverted. Don't be distracted or to the ledge that thou mayest prosper. Congratulations, you will prosper. That thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Verse 9. Have I not commanded thee? Have I not commanded thee? When God has given you a commandment and you are about that business about that work and somebody comes to challenge you why are you doing that who sent you to do that your point to the almighty the one that will crush and conquer every opposer he told me to do it if you have any question ask him if you have any misgiving ask him he commanded me that this is what you do. And so if you have any challenge, don't ask me, don't talk to me. Ask him. If you go to ask him, he will make you one of the people that will carry out the vision. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid. Lord, I am not afraid. The Lord is by my side. I'm not afraid. 
the Lord is going before me, I'm not afraid. The Lord is coming behind me, I'm not afraid. His umbrella is over me, I am not afraid. He that touches you, touches the apple of his eye, I am not afraid. Somebody shout, I'm not afraid. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord, thy God, is... For the Lord, thy God, is... Is with thee, whithersoever, whithersoever, whithersoever thou goest. No accident on your way. No evil personality in your way. You stand in the morning and then you have your megaphone, microphone, whatever, and you are beaming for the gospel. No harm will come to you. In the night you are going to Bible study, you are coming from Bible study, no harm will happen to you. And you are dutiful, you are doing what God has called you to do. No evil will come upon your life in Jesus' name. His angels will surround you. His power will overshadow you. Whither thou goest, it will be with you in Jesus' name. The contagious courage of a godly conqueror. Look at Joshua chapter 10. Joshua chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 12. Joshua chapter 10. I will read him from verse 12. In verse 12, it says, Then spake Joshua to the Lord, In the day when the Lord delivered the Amorites before the children of Israel, and he said in the sight of all Israel, Son, as you end up, Stand thou still upon Gibeon. Look at the courage of the man. That not just to conquer the Canaanites, the Hivites, the Jebusites, and all those enemies, usurping their authority in the land. Now he spoke to the son, Stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou mourn in the valley of Ajalon. And verse 13, Read it out. One, two, three, go. Again, again. One, two, three, go. He did. He did the undoable. You are going to do something. Undoable things. With the courage you have that the Lord has given us, you're going to command every hindrance out of the way. And they will move. Look at this, verse 13. And the sun so still. And the moon stayed until, until, until you finish hindrances out of your way. Until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is not this written in the book of Jeshua? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and hasted not to go down about a whole day. And there was no day like that before it or after it. There was no day like that before that day or after that day that the Lord hearkened unto the voice of a man. For the Lord fought for Israel. He'll fight for you. I said he'll fight for you. You don't need any other thing. He has given you the promise. The promise will not fail in your life. Verse 24. In verse 24, and it came to pass... When they brought out those kings unto Joshua, that Joshua called for all the men of Israel 
and said unto the captains of the men of war that wait with him, come near. Come near. Don't stay far away. Come near. I said, come near. I said, come near. And put your feet upon the necks of these kings. And they came near. And they put their feet upon the necks of them. And Joshua said unto them, What did he say to them? What did he say to them? What did he say again? No, again, the next one. I said, What did he say again? Read on, read on, read on. What did he say? Be strong and of a good courage. What God told Joshua. He made use of that and he overcame. He said, now I know this thing will work. I give it unto you. I didn't hear your amen. God had told him, fear not. I know he, now he gave it to them, fear not. God had told him, be not dismayed. And he gave it to them, not be dismayed. God had told him, be strong and of a good courage. And he told them, be strong and of a good courage. You are going home today stronger than you came. Higher than you came. More courageous than you came. More unconquerable than you came. For thus shall the Lord do to all your enemies against whom ye fight. That amen is too small. This is how God will defeat all your enemies that come against your life. You are going to be victorious. This courage in Joshua that has passed on to me, to me, I said to me, will be for all of us in Jesus' name. Point number three now, the constant companionship of our glorious captain. Constant companionship. Constant companionship. The same way you have felt his presence here, that same way you will feel his presence everywhere. The strength of character you feel here in the presence of the Lord, that same strength of character you feel when the enemy comes anywhere you go in Jesus' name. The constant companionship of a glorious captain. Look at verse 5. Verse 5, There shall not any man be able to stand before thee, tell me, all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. A new day has come. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Look at verse 9. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid. Be not afraid. Be not afraid. Neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. We go many places, different places. I'm going to mention something that might surprise you. You're going to your in-law to be. You want to ask the hand of their daughter in marriage. And you have heard about that father. And the person you want to get married to has been telling you, my dad is difficult. You cannot even know his mind. Even when he wants to say yes and he wants to accept, you look at him and it's like, what are you doing here? Who told you to come to my family? You want to get my daughter? He'll bully on you. If you're not careful, you'll give up. But now you know, no matter how difficult that man, that woman, the mother, 
As you go there, you go with victory. You go with assurance. Has he not commanded you? Has he not given you that lady, that sister, that daughter of the Lord to be your wife? Go. The Lord will go with you. It's giving you that man, and then you are going to the marriage committee. I don't know what question they are going to ask me. Go. The Lord will be with you. You are going for an interview. I don't know what question they are going to ask me. Go. And the Lord will be with you. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Is the Lord speaking to you? Verse 17. Verse 17. Here are the people now talking to Joshua. According as we hearkened unto Moses, in all things, so will we hearken unto thee. He will bend the hearts of the people towards you. He will bend the minds of the people towards you. They will not be so difficult and run you out of the calling God has given you in Jesus' name. Only the Lord thy God be with thee as he was with Moses. Look at what the people are saying. They say, all we want to know is that God is with you as he was with Moses. And we're going to be an encouragement unto you. All your discouragements are gone in Jesus' name. Nothing telling in your mind, I may not succeed. Uh uh, you will succeed. It's written down in heaven by God Himself already. He is with you. You will succeed in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 41. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. It will be with you. Verse 14, fear not. Thou one Jacob, and ye men of Israel, I will help thee, says the Lord and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument, having teeth. The devil will not knock your teeth away. Thou shalt thresh the mountains and beat them small. And thou shalt make the hills as chaff. Thou shalt fan them, and the wind shall carry them away, and the one wind shall scatter them, and thou shalt rejoice in the Lord. God will put testimony in your mouth. And shall glory in the Holy One of Israel. The Lord is going with you. You will not fail. He will not fail you. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 7. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go. I will go. Thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee. To deliver thee, says the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. You see there? Is she there? 
the word of God is your mouth already. See, I have set thee this day over the nations, over the kingdoms, to root out, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down, to build, and to plant. You have a work to do, it will be done. Verse 19, and they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. For I am with thee, says the Lord, to deliver thee. I am delivered, praise the Lord. I said I'm delivered, praise the Lord. You are delivered, praise the Lord. Jeremiah chapter 15 verse 21. And I will deliver thee out of the hand of the wicked. You didn't hear that one. Jeremiah 15, 21. And I will deliver thee out of the hand of the wicked. And I will redeem thee out of the hand of the terrible. You are delivered. You are set free. Out of the hand of the terrible. They will not overcome you. They will not overpower you. The strength of the Lord is going back home with you. The power of the Lord is going back home with you. Victory all the way through. Victory all the way through. Chapter 31 of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 31. And I'm reading here from verse 11. For the Lord has redeemed Jacob and has ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than he. Stronger than he. But he has delivered you. But he has set you free. You are no more weaker vessel. I am not a weaker vessel. I'm now a stronger vessel. Be it confirmed in your life in Jesus' name. Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 18. Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 18. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom. You are going to read that yourself. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom to whom be glory forever and ever. And the church of God said, it will be fulfilled in your life. If we will rise up and take it to the Lord in prayer, you will know the victory like you have never known victory. If you will take everything and read everything and pray through everything, you're going to have victory like you never had in your life. If you believe the word of God, it will never leave you. It will never forsake you. You're going to have strength, overcoming strength like you never had in your life. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. It's a day of victory. It's a day of power. It's a day of overcoming. It's a day of conquering. It's a day for the champion. Open your mouth, open your mouth, and talk to the Lord in prayer. Supernatural victory. Spiritual victory. Spectacular victory. Open your mouth and let him hear you. Moses is gone. Joshua is here. Elijah is gone. Elisha is here. As I was with them, so I will be with you. They didn't see him physically, but they heard his word. And they believed that word. And that word became yes and amen in their lives. 
You have not seen God in the physical. You have heard his word. He has assured you he, he will not fail you. He has assured you he will not let you down. He has assured you no enemy will stand before you. He has assured you you are going to be victorious. He has assured you today will be greater than yesterday. Hold on to that word. Nobody will conquer you. Hold on to that word. Nobody will defeat you. Hold on to that word. The day of your birth is recorded in heaven. And the day when you are going to leave the earth is recorded in heaven. No demon will change your date. No Satan will change your date. Everything you are supposed to do as you go into the land, the land of the Canaanites and the Hebrides and the Jebusites, everything you are going to accomplish, the Lord has recorded it in the book of God in heaven. There's no demon, there's no Satan that can go there and change your destiny. Tell him. Tell him, Lord, I believe. Tell him, Lord, I accept. They will not stand before you. And you will not crumble and cringe before them. You will not fall. No, you cannot fall. He has raised you up. He has called you up. He has given you duty. He has given you assignment. It will be done. It will be done. This land will be covered. This land will be evangelized. This land will be harvested. Nothing stands before you to hinder you or to disturb you. Are you a pastor? You'll be a successful pastor. Are you a worker? You'll be a victorious worker, profitable worker, productive worker. You will overcome. You have overcome already. Everything that stands before you is going to destroy. It will not fail you. He will not delay the fulfillment of his promise for you. Overcomer. 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 Whatever stands before you, overcomer. Whatever hinders you, overcome. Whatever intimidates you, overcome. Whatever wants to ruin your family, overcome. And whatever wants to spoil the work of God in your hand, you are overcome. Pharaoh will be drowned in the sea. Nebuchadnezzar will be driven to the wilderness, to the forest. Herod will be eating of worms. And you will keep on standing. He has called you. He has called you. He has called you. Let no weak person, an ant, a cockroach, a little thing somewhere, make you to back out. From the calling of God upon your life. Don't turn to the right. Don't turn to the left. The community is waiting for you. We're waiting for the champion. Your community is waiting for you. We're waiting for the conqueror. We're waiting for the overcomer. Brother, rise up. Take the challenge. Take the bull by the horn. Move on. Victory has come. Sister, Rise up and look at the duty. Eyeball to eyeball. And say, yes, I come. This is what I was appointed for. Moses is gone. Joshua, rise up. And do the work he has called you to do. Jesus will never leave you. He's the captain of your salvation. The Lord will never leave you. He's the commander of his people. The Lord 
is more than a conqueror. And you are by his side, a companion to him. You will not fail. If he will not fail, you will not fail. If he cannot be distracted, you will not be distracted. You will overcome. You will overcome. With Christ by your side, with the Lord going before you, with the promises of God as yes and amen, you must overcome. You must overcome. You must overcome. Like Joshua walked and stepped on the heads and the necks of the enemies, you will walk and step on the necks of those enemies. As God gave him the victory, he has given you the victory. Go ahead and conquer. Go ahead and possess. Ask of me the heathens for the inheritance. And I will give you all their territory. I'll make you victorious, conquerors, conqueror, make you an overcomer, make you a champion. His power abides, remains with you. In Jesus' name we pray. I cannot see failure in front of anyone. I cannot see fear on the face of anyone. I cannot see defeat in the life of anyone. I cannot see turning to the right, turning to the left, and being distracted in the life and ministry of anyone. I see victory ahead of you. I see power ahead of you. I see authority coming out of your mouth. I see answered prayer. I see answered prayer. I see conquering and conquering and conquering. It has happened on your behalf in Jesus' name. Whatever conquered you before, you will conquer. Every sin, you will conquer. Every sickness, you will conquer. Every demon, you will conquer. Every power of the enemy you will conquer. I see achievers before me. Who is there? What's your name? Achiever. I said, What's your name? Conqueror. What's your name? Overcomer. What's your name? It is done. I said, It is done. I said it is done. Everywhere you go, if there's a river uncrossable, before you get there, God will make a bridge over there. You're passing over to the victory side. Passing over to the conqueror side. Passing over to the overcomer side. Be not afraid. Be not dismayed. The Almighty God is with you. Whithersoever, wherever you go, it will start from tonight. As you are going, it will clear every stumbling block out of your way in Jesus name I receive what are you I receive father in Jesus name 
We thank you for the calling you have given us tonight. And we thank you for the promise you have given us tonight. You are not a man that you will lie. Not the son of man that you will deceive. Have you promised? It shall be done. You have said you are going to clear every stumbling block, every enemy, every challenge out of the way of your people. Confirm it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Whatever any brother, any sister, boy or girl, whatever anyone feared in the past, those things now will fear them in Jesus' name. The things that pursued them before, we turn around, we're going to pursue those things, we're going to conquer them in Jesus' name. Every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon, every door your hand will knock at, every sinner you will talk to, every backslider you will talk to, the Lord will soften their heart. And give them to Christ through you in Jesus' name. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. If that sickness is on you, or your wife, or your husband, or your child, or your parent, and you open your mouth to say, go, that sickness will go in Jesus' name. Any demon attack? any demon oppression, any demon affliction. Oh Lord, I pray, as your people, one by one, they open their mouths courageously and they tell that demon and they tell that spirit, go, they will go in Jesus' name. No enemy will stand before you. No oppressor will stand before you. No persecutor will stand before you. No magician or cultic person will stand before you. You're moving on into a new level of victory. A new level of power. A new level of overcoming. The miracle you have never seen before, you will see. The majesty of the Lord you have not seen before, you will see. What I have never seen. What years have never heard. What has never been revealed to the hearts of men. As you love the Lord, as you fear the Lord, as you are claiming the promise of God, as you are moving on in the work of God, you will see in Jesus' name. The Lord will never leave you. His power will never leave you. His grace will never leave you. Companionship will never leave you. No failure again. No fear again. No famine again. You will prosper. You will succeed. You will overcome. It is registered in heaven. It will be recorded in your life. We well, thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray.